So in today's video, I want to share my favorite tech purchases from this past year. And if you're interested in buying any of these items for yourself, definitely check out the links to everything below, which if you happen to use, it greatly supports the channel. So thank you. So starting off with probably one of the most controversial purchases that I made this year, my Google Pixel Fold. Yes, I still have it. And it is one of my favorite phones that I've ever used. I'm literally obsessed with its form factor as it fits great when using it with one hand. And then when you unfold the phone, it basically feels like you're opening up a small book where you have a larger seven 7.6 inch display, which is great for watching videos, web browsing, or even multitasking where you can use two separate apps at once on the larger screen. It does basically feel like you have two devices in one with it being a mini tablet as well as a cell phone. Now there are some quirks with this thing as the camera isn't as good as the new Pixel 8 Pro. Battery life could also be improved as it drains a bit quicker than my iPhone. And there are definitely plenty of apps that are still not compatible with the Pixel Fold's larger display. But to me, I'm still happy I bought it at full price, by the way, it opened me up to the world world of foldable phones and now I am definitely a fan and can't wait to see where foldable phones go in the future. Now this next piece of tech has been one that has actually brought me the most joy this past month. The Steam Deck OLED. This is actually the limited edition version that has a dope transparent and orange colorway scheme. I can't really explain how happy this device makes me feel like maybe it's a little bit of nostalgia because I used to love playing video games when I was younger. In fact my first handheld was the OG Game Boy and literally I had all of the handhelds all the way through the PSP Slim which PlayStation I don't I don't know how you botched the PSP a decade ago. The PlayStation Portal that was just launched could be a lot better. I personally wasn't really interested in the Nintendo Switch as I only really like a few classic Nintendo games such as Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. But when I saw the Steam Deck could actually play AAA games like God of War, The Amazing Spider-Man, I was like, automatic buy. Funny enough, I actually bought the original LCD version back in July, but when Steam announced the OLED version a couple months after, I was like, I guess I have to figure out how to sell my old one, mainly because the OLED version has a way better screen, which is now a bit larger and has more color clarity and contrast, but it also has around 40% more battery life and weighs about 30 grams lighter. It's legit the perfect kickback gaming device when I'm chilling on the couch at home or when I have time on my hands when I'm traveling. Now, truthfully, this thing is a bit of a beast to hold, but it does feel great in the hands. And personally, I really don't mind because it gives me that full handheld gaming console experience that I've been missing since my childhood. I'm honestly really tempted to make a video on the Steam Deck. If you'd be interested in seeing a full review or maybe a day in the life with it, let me know in the comments below. Another favorite tech item I recommend, which is actually my most recent purchase, the Osmo Pocket 3. Now, I haven't used this device for long, but I'm very excited to use it for my upcoming trip to Ghana. I was looking for a low profile way to capture my experience on video, and this handheld camera is the perfect solution. It has a one inch camera sensor that sits on top of a mini gimbal, which helps to smooth out footage when moving or walking around. And what I really love about the Osmo Pocket 3 is the two inch rotatable touchscreen, which can be used to see what you're filming, and you can set it up to whatever orientation that the screen is in, which is great when you need to switch between vertical or horizontal formats when creating content on the go. It shoots 4K footage up to around 120 frames per second and has a ton of extra features like after track, which basically allows you to choose your subject and then it automatically follows that subject around to keep it in frame. It also has a low light mode, which helps you to get clear footage when you're in darker environments. And the fact that it's super small and can fit into any small bag or even pockets if they're big enough, this is probably the most versatile camera that you can have when traveling, which is why I'm so pumped to document this once in a lifetime experience. If you're curious to see how everything comes out, make sure that you are part of the Instagram fam and follow me at Noah C. Banks. Now, another trusty tech item that is a part of my camera arsenal is actually the A7C II with a 33 megapixel full frame sensor, 4K video capabilities, and a smaller form factor. This is the perfect travel and content creator camera. Now, I currently have the A7R5 for photo and the FX3 for video, specifically for client work as well as this YouTube channel, but they are both way too big and way too expensive to be traveling around with. I love the A7C because I can get about 80% of the specs in a body that's 20 to 30% more compact. This paired with my 35 millimeter lens is the perfect combo when walking around. Honestly, if I had to get rid of all my cameras and was forced to choose to only have one of them, this would be my first choice. In fact, this was my only camera that I took with me on my recent trip to Italy, and I was able to get some really dope photos when I was there. Whether you're in the market for something that's good for creating social content or something that you can travel with and capture beautiful pictures that you could print and put on your walls in your apartment, this is the perfect camera that fits the bill. The next favorite piece of tech that I bought this year was actually the Bose Quiet Comfort Ultra headphones. And to my surprise, they're actually really good. And I was really impressed with how these headphones performed. The main thing that I loved, 
they finally went back to the smaller folding form factor. I was super pumped to see this older style again, especially after the latest version of all the over the ear headphones from Sony, Apple, Bose. They didn't fold down at all and it made it super difficult to try to put in the backpack. The sound quality is great, which I expect nothing less from Bose headphones and the noise cancellation on these are extremely effective and definitely up to par with the AirPods Max. You can also control the different features of the QC Ultras by using the shortcut buttons on the right ear cup, or you can use the Bose Music app where you can adjust different sound settings and profiles based off the different scenarios that you find yourself in. For example, I have a commute mode where I max out noise cancellation, turn on wind block, and activate the motion immersive audio setting to have the ultimate listening experience when I go to work. And look, for those New York subways, these, perfect. Now, I do enjoy the mesh cups of the AirPods Max a tad bit better, but don't get me wrong, Quiet Comfort Ultras do live up to their namesake. I also still want to try these at the gym to see how they hold up against sweat, but so far they've been great every day in travel over the ear headphones. An honorable mention is actually the Apple Watch Ultra, the first version. I didn't update to the Apple Watch Ultra 2 because truthfully, there's really nothing that different between the two that would make me want to upgrade. However, this watch has been nothing but amazing. I was a bit nervous spending $600 plus for this thing, but it has been extremely worth it over the last year. The larger and brighter screen are fantastic, and I really dig the more robust titanium form factor, and the battery life is also the best out of all the other Apple Watches. I was able to get at least a day and a half to two days with it. It's great for all sorts of activities like running, swimming, and hiking, and probably is the best Apple-specific smartwatch in the game right now. However, the only thing that I wish was a bit better was the health tracking, which if you want to see a fitness watch competitor that is crushing in the game right now compared to this, check this video out right here. And if you are interested in my other favorite tech products that are all the way on the other side of the spectrum and under $100, check this video out right here. As always, stay healthy, be happy, and embrace the hype. Woo!